Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. For this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make this gorgeous starry night earring. It is so beautiful. I'm in love with the colors. This stone here is amazing. It's a Preciosa pendant, and the color is called Bermuda Blue, and it is just crazy gorgeous. I really love it. So here is my earring. I'm going to show you how to make this. And I got the materials to make this from BeadingSchool.com by Erica Sandor. I'm using her bi-monthly subscription box. Right here it is. This is her turquoise level. And the month I am using is November, December 2021. The theme is Starry Night, so I'm calling this Starry Night's Earring, and I think that the name really goes with this because of how I have it designed and the colors, so I'm really happy with the whole design. And so, if you want, if you're watching this video and it's still November, December 2021, you can still get this box. I will link it down there below, and again, I'm using the turquoise level. Now, in case you missed my opening of this box, I did a... A video opening this. I will also link that video down there below so you can go and watch it. And also so you can just get a quick idea of like how much stuff you're getting in this box. I will put the picture up now of everything that I got in this box. It's a lot of stuff. Now let's say you want to make these earrings and you're watching this video at a later time and you can no longer get this Starry Night theme. What I will also do is link individual materials, the beads that I used in the connector, the stone right here, the earring finding. I will link all of this down there below individually so you guys can go and get this stuff that way in case you missed out on the subscription box. Alright, so let's go ahead and get all the materials round up and start creating this gorgeous earring. By the way, I also wanted to let you know, other than making earrings with this box, I'm also working on making a really pretty pendant. I still have some more work to do to it before I can show you guys how to make it, so be on the lookout for the second project that I'm doing with this subscription box. All right, now let's go over the list of materials, and I'm actually going to tell you the list of materials you will need to make one earring, because we can only make one earring at a time. So, of course, you would double all of these materials to make a pair of earrings. So you're going to need four feet of eight pound fire line and I am using the black because I'm using so many dark colors here and again if you're making a pair of earrings you will need to cut two pieces four foot long each. Okay. You're also going to need a size 10 beading needle and you will need an eight millimeter Preciosa Chaton and I'm using four 6mm Preciosa bicones. You're also going to need four 8mm Wibe Duo beads. That's such a strange name, but these beads here are really cool. I like them a lot. And you're going to need four 5x8mm Gem Duo beads, eight Miyuki Half Tyla beads, eight 3mm Preciosa bicones. 4 3mm check fire polish beads, 11 oh Miyuki Delicas, 11 oh Miyuki Seed Beads, 15 oh Miyuki Seed Beads, an earring finding, a 6mm Preciosa Crystal Connector, that's this little piece right here that's in between my earring finding. You actually don't have to use this, but I really do like it more with this. Because of how big this is up on the top there, I like more of the lengthening here. It just looks nice, you know, on your ear, by your face. It, it just looks better to have a little something right here, all right? And you're also going to need this here. This is called, this is made by Preciosa. It's an 11 by 16 millimeter glass pendant. The color I'm using is Bermuda Blue. And you're going to need a little jump ring, a 4 millimeter jump ring. So everything I am using is from this box. There's only a couple things that's mine. And one of them is Fireline. That's mine. The needle, that's from my stash. And this jump ring right here is actually from a previous, I think it was a subscription box or maybe another box that I got from BeatingSchool.com. But yeah, everything here is from that box. So I'm not really using 
anything on mine. You know, that's not really anything, a jump ring and thread. Everybody has that stuff on hand. So let's go ahead and make this. It's a lot of fun. Okay, we're making the base first. So I'm going to start by picking up a 6 millimeter bicone and 11 0 seed bead. 6 millimeter bicone, 11 0, 6 millimeter, an 11, and a 6. And I have to end with an 11 so that it looks like this. Now, when I first made this, I tied it in a knot, and later on, I ended up regretting tying it because it was too stiff for me. So this time, I'm not going to tie it, and we're going to see how it goes. So I want to leave a 6-inch tail, and at the very end, when I'm done with this, I should have a remainder 6 inches so I can tie this off. So I just go like this, find the 6-inch mark, and then I hold it like this with my finger, pinch the thread, slide these beads down, hold it like this, pass all of these beads through here, or the needle through the beads. Get one more. Okay, and then I just go like this, pull it through, slide this down. Okay, like that. Make sure I have my little tail, and I do, it's right on. Now I'm going to take the needle, see this is where I previously tied a knot at before, and when I did that it gave me some issues. I still finished the design, I didn't have to undo it or restart a new earring. I still completed it, but it was a little tight. Okay, so I'm just crisscrossing my ends of that, so I have two thread paths which keep this from undoing itself so much. Right, and I'm going to put the ruler to the side there and I'm just going to straighten this out so I have this. I think this is going to be much easier to work with. Now I'm going to pick up a 3 millimeter check fire polish bead, a silver seed bead, okay, and then I'm going to do four of these delicas and then a silver seed bead and then a three millimeter check fire polish like this slide these down I'm gonna take the needle pass back through the same bead that I'm coming out of just in the opposite hole okay I'm also gonna go through the seed bead if I can and through the next bicone like that. Okay. So make sure that's tight there. And now I'm going to pick up a 3 millimeter, an 11 0, and four delicas. Like this. I'm going to go down this 11 0, the 3 millimeter. I'm going to skip over that seed bead there and I'm going to go straight through that bicone. Okay, and you want this, we'll pull that loop, you want this to flip up for us. This is what our chaton is going to be sitting in. Now I need to reposition my needle so I can pick up more beads. So this time I'm going to go through the seed bead and through the six millimeter. Okay, like that, just pulling the thread through. And then I'm going to pick up my last three, an 11 0 in silver, and then my four delicas. Like this. I'm going to go down through this 11 0, the 3 millimeter, skip over that 11 0, and just go through the 6 millimeter. Okay, and then pull all your thread through. So there's my third wall, like that. Again, I have to reposition my needle, so I'm going to go through this 11 0, up through this bicone, and then I'm going to come up this 3 millimeter and the 11 0 seed bead. Do not skip that seed bead. So I'm adding that 11 0 right there to give me height for my 
stone, my cabochon to sit on, because I've done this bezel before in my, what was it? That bracelet that I made with the last box. The Art Nouveau, Art Nouveau bracelet that I made with the last box. And um, I did the check far polish beads, and it worked perfectly with just the three millimeter there. But with this one, because I'm using the bicones, it's making it taller. It sits up taller, so I have to add that 11 over there on the top. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. So now I'm picking up four delicas only, okay? Because I already have my four corners, and I just need this to sit on top. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go down through this 11 0 through the three millimeter. Pull this through. I'm going to go through this bicone, not that 11 0. Okay, just through the bicone. And then I'm going to sew up through this 3 millimeter and through the 11 0 seed bead. Okay, so neat. See, it's all shaped funny that's because I did not tie a knot and it, it's loose on me but that's great because I need it to be relaxed so I could do all of this work because there's a lot of thread paths going on here so now I'm gonna get my little chaton and pop it in there okay it sits just like this see that if I didn't have those silver beads in there this would not sit in there it would stick up out of the top I tried making it work, but it wasn't. So I like to go right. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pass through these four delicas. Okay, like this. I'm going to go around, hold the stone in. I'm going to go around all four of these. And I'm just going to put a thread path right here, this loop. When I pull that, that thread is going to sit on top of the silver seed bead and there's going to be a thread sitting on top of all four and that's going to be pulling the walls together and keeping our stone from falling out okay so I just go around reinforcing all four sides one more time right here and then once you get through you're going to want to pull this tight Okay. I have one more. I thought that was my last. Okay, there we go. Okay, so see I had a gap there. I pulled it tight and I'm like, there's a gap there. So I realized, oh, I'm missing a thread. So now that I'm going through here, then I pull this tight. Then it should all come together. Okay. Pull it tight and it looks great. I'm very happy. I feel like it's working better because I didn't tie the knot. Isn't it silly how something so simple can make a difference? Now what I'm going to do is pick up an 11 0 seed bead and I'm going to follow the same uh, thread path but I'm going to sit the seed bead up here in these corners and I'll show you right here that little seed bead in each corner. We're putting that in there so we could do this little X pattern with more seed beads to add even more embellishment and it will also be covering the side here and this will also lead to us covering up the bicone because see right there's that bicone and you can't really see it in there. It is hidden. Okay so I'm gonna do the same thing again that I just did but I'm adding a seed bead in each corner. So there's one, pick up another, go through these four, turn, pick up another, through these four, again turn, and then another right here, through these four. Come on, okay. Just like that, so all four corners. Pull this tight. Now I'm gonna go through this corner. 
right here. We're going to make an X. I keep getting my thread caught. Oh, oh, it is trying to tie a knot. I'm gonna back this out. I didn't pull the knight the the knot tight yet. So I'm just gonna pass through it. And there we go, I got it undone. Okay. So I have to be coming out of here, out of this corner, to add more beads. And now we're going to be adding the gold seed beads, the 15 ounce, right here. So it's going to be three 15s, my Delica, and then three silver 11s. One, two, three, Delica. Three 11s. Like this. I'm coming out of this seed bead, so I have to go like this. Okay. I'll pull it through and show you what it does. Like that. Okay, we're making a little X here. I'm going to pick up three silver 11s. And I'm going to go through this blue Delica. Now, when you do this, you want to put your finger here, hold this down, and pull your needle through. Because if you don't, this here will get really big and messy. It'll loosen up. And um, it's just frustrating to fix it. So that's a little trick. You just put your finger over it to stop it from doing it. So there's three. And then I'm going to go through this corner. Okay, pull that tight, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side, so I did it one time, and I'm going to do it four, uh, three more times, so a total four all the way around. Three elevens, one, two, three, okay, and my Delicas, and then, reminder, these are 15s, these are 11s, alright, sometimes I, I, I say the wrong thing when I mean something else. So there's my beads. I'm going to go through this bicone here. And then I'm going to pick up three elevens again. Go through this blue Delica. And you know what? I'm not going to put my finger on it because I want you to see what it does. Okay? See that? It got all loosened up. So all I do is I go to this string here. I pull that down, so that goes down, put my finger here, and then I pull my working tail, and there we go. So now you know why I put my finger over it so it doesn't loosen up on us. You can fix it, but um, it does just save time, you know, to just cover it with your finger so it doesn't loosen up on you. Okay, so it's looking better. I think it looks weird open, so I like covering it. Again, three fifteens, a blue delica, three elevens, through this bicone, okay, three elevens, through the blue delica. Like that, put your finger on here. Wait, where'd my tail go? I'm gonna pull this, it's already loosened up. Put my finger here and then pull this through so they sit right there. And then pick up my three 15s and go through this corner silver bead there. Okay, I'll show you what it looks like. We have one more side. And I feel like I should pull that tighter. Alright. So, three again. Blue Delica. And then three silver. Through this bicone. 
Wow, what a huge difference it has made, not tying a knot. I find there's some projects where I have to tie the knot, and then some it's better for me to not tie the knot. But usually, you know, if you just pass through the beads a few times, like, that's why people always did in the past the stopper bead where you take a seed bead and you pass through it like three times, just pass through it over and over. I actually, I started learning that way and I actually didn't like it because I would have the issue where I couldn't get my stopper bead off. It would get stuck in the project and I would have to take it apart to get it out. So that was a problem for me. You know what, I screwed up, I already had those beads there and I only needed... I only needed the silver ones. I got distracted. So I got my three silver going through the blue delica because that's already there for me. Like this. And then three gold fifteenths and then through this silver bead. Like that. Okay, so that was my last wall. Now what I have to do is sew down through these three gold, the Delica, and the three silver. Let's see, can I do it in one shot? Yes I can, and I can poke my finger too, all at one time. So through those seven beads, okay, and then I'm going to go through this bicone here. And then I'm going to go through this seed bead. And now we're going to work on the very bottom. And I actually work on this upside down. Okay. Now what we have to do, it's better to see this on this side, is I'm going to add these gold seed beads and the silver right here. Okay, then after we add that, then we can do all of these two whole beads and all that fancy work there. Okay, so working upside down, I forgot how many did I use. I did a silver 11 0, three gold, silver 11 0, and three gold. The bead screwy. And then a silver. Okay, so just like this. That's the pattern. And then I'm going to go into the next silver seed bead in the corner. The very first ones that we added with the bicones. Okay? And then I'm going to do this all the way around, total four times. 111, three gold, 111, three fifteens, and then 11. And then through that bead right there. And my eleven three fifteens, eleven three fifteens, like that, and through this one. Okay, one more time, eleven three fifteens. 11 and 3 15s and an 11. I'm going to go through this silver seed bead, the one that's in the corner, but if I can, I also want to step up and go through all of these beads. Yes, pretty. Now I do stop here before I add more beads. And I grab this silver 11 and I make it stick out. So I press the gold down and I just make it into a point like this because you see how it's recessed in with the gold. My, my uh, fire line feels so wiry right now, but I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it's because it's a short piece. I'm using four feet. It's short, so it's like all over the place. Yeah, so I just want this to stick out for me. It's also tighter when it's like this. Okay. That's good enough. That'll do. And now I'm going to pick up, and I'm doing this 
I'm going to do my wipe duos now. I'm doing this upside down, remember? I'm going in this direction, so I'm going to pick up three Delicas. A gold seed bead. I tried doing the 11 here. You have to do a 15 here. And the 11 did not work, so it has to be 15. So, three Delicas, a 15 and then a Wibe Duo. We're upside down, so I have to pick this bead up like this because we're going in this direction. So I picked it upside down, going through the bottom hole, and then a gold seed bead, and then my three Delicas. Oh, and also, I found out that I cannot string these beads like this and slide all of these down together. They will not go because of this. I have to move that and because of the angle right there, it gets stuck. I did that so many times. It was really annoying. Okay, sliding these down. I'm then going to take my needle and go right through that seed bead that we made stick out for us. Okay, so that's what that looks like and then flip it over. See how it's connected there? So I'm just going to flip this over again and I'm going to do this three more times. Picking up three Delicas, a 15 0 Wibe Duo, flip it upside down, go through the bottom hole because we're going left, if that makes sense, and then 15 0 and then my three Delicas. Okay, like that. And again, the Delicas are 11-0. Uh, Slide those down first. And then the web do so it don't get stuck on your needle. You can also crack your beads if you force that. Because it was really not wanting to go through the needle like that altogether. So like this. Two more times. Three Delicas. Uh, that one's really wonky looking. Okay. And then 15 0. And then flip him over just like this. Upside down, bottom hole, slide that down. Pick up a 15 0. Three. Delicas, slide those down. And go through the next silver seed bead here. One more time. One, two, and three. Fifteen oh. Wipe duo. Bottom hole. Upside down. Fifteen oh. And then three delicas. Go through this point, and while you're at it, go up through the three Delicas and the Gold Seed Bead. Actually, no, I'm just going to go through the silver one, because I don't want to get stuck. Okay, so that's the back, and that's the front. we're going to do is take the needle. We're still working on the back and I'm going to pass through one Delica. Just one. Like that. The one that's right beside the silver. No, yeah, I dropped it. Right beside the silver seed bead. Okay, so see that? Right there. That's where we're at. I just added those. Okay. Pull this tight. We're going to pick up a 15 0, an 11 0, half Tyla, 11 0, and a 15 0. Like this. I'm going to pass my needle through the Wibe Duo, the next 
Web Duo, right there's my thread, so I'm going through that one. Okay, so pull that through, and it's going to sit like that. And I'll flip it over so you can see. Pull it tight. There, that's what we have. We're going to do this all the way around, but we're doing this eight times, not four this time. So, gold 15, silver 11, half Tyla 11, and 15. That 15 is shaped so weird, like this. Now, this time, I'm going to go through three seed beads. I'm going to go through this Delica, okay? So right here, the Stelica, the silver seed bead, the 15 -0, and also through the Stelica. So I'm probably going to have to go through like this, at an angle, see, to make that work. What is going on with my tail? Oh, it's this. That's what's confusing me. Okay. So now I have this. That's what I have. So I'm going to do this. Again here, 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 all the way around. So 15-0, half Tyla. Oh, both jumped off. And then silver and the gold. Like this. Go through this vibe duo. Make sure you pull this tight as you go. Also make sure that your tilas are sticking out and then pick up a 15. I keep picking up the same funny looking seed bead. And then an 11, half tila, 11, 15 -0. like this. And then I'll slide these down because I have to flip this over and I'm going to go through again at an angle. I have to go through all of these. Like that, through those three beads. Now I have this. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, to the wipe duo. Fifteen. Eleven. Tyla. Eleven. Fifteen. Through these three. Again, 15, 11, Tyla, 11, that one's too wide, 11, and a 15. Go there. Here is my three sides. That's what I have so far. You know when you have it tight, when you pull it tight, and you push those all those beads out and they stay out like that. They don't fall down, they, they stick out. Okay, and then an 11, or a 15, 11, and then my last Tyla, 11. Fifteen. I'm gonna go through again at an angle. I might have to do like a couple of times. Let me see. Can I fit through here? Yes. Just gotta wiggle. Okay. And then I'm gonna go up through. The gold, the silver, 
the Tyla through this silver and through this gold. We're stepping up. I'm still working on the back side. I do go back and forth flipping it. Okay, now this is what we have. That's the back. Here is the front. I'm going to flip it over again. And the reason why I like flipping over because I like working away from me, not towards me. I don't like poking myself. I try to go that way. Even though I still poke myself, it's just less chances of poking myself. Now I'm going to pick up two Delicas, a 15 0. Two Delicas. I'm right here on top of the Wibe duo now. See? I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through this gold, the silver, the uh, Tyla, half Tyla, but I also want to go through that next gold. I have to push that bead out. Though. Pop it out. There we go. Now I went through. So just use your fingernail to push it out. Okay. Just like this. So see, this is going around the point right there. And now I'm going to pick up my gem duo and I'm going to do it upside down. So flip it upside down, working away from you. You're going to go through the bottom hole. Okay, slide that down. And then you're going to go through, you're going to skip over all of these beads and go through this silver 11, go through the Tyla. This next. 11 0 and the, then the 15 0. Okay, pull this tight. This bead, the gem duo we're putting in, right now this is flat, but once we put all four of the gem duos in, this is going to puff. So if you look at this from the side, it is not flat, it is puffed slightly. This, this part right here, what I'm talking about, it's puffed. Um, originally, I did make it puff. And then I tried it flat, and when it was flat, it was ripply and wavy. It was not staying flat. So then I went back to the dome because it looked better. Okay, so I'm right here. I'm going to flip it over again. We're at a wipe duo. That means I need two Delicas, a 15 and two Delicas. I'm going to go through this 15, through the silver, the Tyla, and through the next... 11. I have to pop it up though so I can get through. Wiggle! I got it! Just like that. Okay, so like that. Pull it tight. And then my gem duo again. We're working away from us. So I'm going to flip it over and go through the bottom hole because our thing is upside down here skip over all of these beads and go through the silver 15 not 15 11 it's 11 and then to the tyla through the 11 and through the 15 just like that now that one is making a curve did you see that so the curve it already has right here in a side okay and then my two Delicas, 15, and two Delicas. I'm going to go through all of these. 15. Come on, come on. 11, Tyler. 11. that tight and then another gem duo again you want to flip it upside down and go through the bottom hole and then go through this silver 11 here through the Tyla turn go through this 11 and through the 15 yes like that
okay and then Delica's my board's moving isn't it 15 and then my two Delica's these are gonna sit in the wipe duo I'm gonna go through these beads again through the 15 through the 11 it seems um stiffer here so I'm not going to be able to go through all of those where was I right here I'm just going to go through these two seed beads for now because of how tight this is and then through my Tyla and my 110 seed bead like that and then pick up the gem duo again upside down bottom hole And then through this 11 -0. and up through the Tyla, through the silver, okay, I'm going to go up through the gold 15-0. Then this one go through. The tripod's in my way. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm trying to go through this 15. I should have went through it when I went through the silver, but I didn't. So I'm through the 15 now, but I'm going to also try to go through these two delicas. Okay, it feels a little stiff. There we go. Okay. Through there. See how that's loose? I didn't pull it tight yet. But uh, now I'm going to go through this 15 and through this Delica. There. Okay, we are on the outside edge. I'm going to stop. I'm going to pull this tight and check my work. Okay, everything needs to be flipped over like this. That's what we have so far. It's still a little messy, but it's work in progress. Okay, that's what I have. I'm going to flip it over again. It just seems easier to work on the back side. I do like to make this cut more, so I push the center down, I pull the walls up, and I pull this tight. Okay, now what I'm going to do is pick up an 11 0 and then my gold three millimeter bicone like this and I'm gonna go through this Tyla we're doing the outside edge now of our earring okay and then a silver seed bead an 11 0 and then a 15 0 and I'm gonna go through the gem duo and then a gold seed bead 15 and then an 11 in silver and through this Tyla okay and then I'm gonna pick up my bicone and a silver seed bead 11 I'm gonna go through these three here like this for the Delica, 15 out Delica. Pull it. Pull it tight so it flattens. See how it looks flat now? It was warpily. Okay. I'm still going. I'm going to do silver again. And then my 3 millimeter through this bead. The Tylo. That's what I mean. And then I'm going to do an 11 0 and a 15 through the gem duo. And then I reverse it because now I'm going down. So I'm going to do a gold. And then.
the silver. Turn it. It's trying to get unwrapped. So like that. Through this Tyla. Pull it tight. My three millimeter and a seed bead do these three here Delica 15 -0. Delica okay looks good I'm gonna do oh I'll show you what it looks like on that side it's a little warped but you know it's still work in progress I'm going to do uh, Love Owl and then my Bicone through the Tyla and then a fifth uh, Love Owl, then a 15 through the Gem Duo, pull that tight, 15. 11 right through here pull it tight oh it's looking much better okay and then I'm going to pick up my bicone my 11 through these three Delica 15 oh Delica Pull it tight my eleven and my bicone through the Tyla eleven and fifteen through the gem duo. Wait to see how we add the preciosa pendant there. That's gonna be awesome. I'm really exciting about I'm really excited about that little uh, technique that I came up with. Okay, through this Tyla. We're almost at the close. We have one left. It's going to be a bicone because we're coming out of the Tyla and then a silver seed bead. Through I have to go through here between these two delicas. Come on, stand up. Is that gold beads laying down right there? So I can't get in there. There we go. There we go. Okay, through these three. I'm gonna make sure I'm not piercing my thread. If it feels too tight, you're probably piercing your thread. Just back out and go back in. Okay, so I went through there. I've gone full circle now. I need to exit out of the gem duo. So I'm going to go through these two, the 11 the gold bicone, flip it over, go through the Tyla, and then go through these two seed beads. And then through the gem duo. Just the gym do it. Don't go through the next 15. Alright. I got around it. Okay. I'm going to stop here. Now if you study this one, I actually have the Tylas pressed in. They look like little bricks. Okay. And it's the um, Wibe Duo that's sticking out. So I press the Tyla in. I pop it in and it rests just below the Wipe Duo. Yeah, just like that. I'm going to 
going in the right direction. Where does it start? It's coming out this side. So just like that. Yeah, that's correct. So you just want these to be like sitting in the back. They actually tuck underneath. Do you see this one? See how the gray tile is tucked underneath the wipe dough? You want it just like that. So the outside edge is actually flat, but where the wipe duo is, right here, is puffed. But now I'm going to show you how to make this little bale here. I love this so much. This is the first time I've done this. And I realized instead of doing one loop, because see it's a loop, going like this on the front and back, I should do a V pattern so that it doesn't flip. So, see that it looks V right there, and then it goes straight down, and it looks the same on the back, and I did this little connector like that right there. This here is such an awesome little trick. I cannot forget about this. This is a must know. Now that I have figured this out, I, I need to remember this for the rest of my life. Because all the time, what I used to do was just pick up like six seven depends if it I do six if I do an earring finding because the earring finding goes in between three earring finding and then three seed beads if I do a pendant I then do seven seed beads so that the jump ring or the um, bale sits on the seventh seed bead and it doesn't go and rub against the thread if that, if that makes sense okay and it was just a loop so I always had to have the bale going in a different direction this way you, if you wanted to make a necklace, you would actually, this is your bail, okay? So let's say we wanted this to go on a chain, instead of putting that drop there, or we would do it this way, right? We could leave the drop on. Um, you could actually make this bigger, so I'm going to make it small because I only have this connector here. But if you wanted to put this on a chain, you can make this loop much bigger, and you would just add more C beads. And the silver bead there is kind of our little marker to show our V pattern there, our decorative looking. So let's just go ahead and do this, okay? I'm going to start by picking up two 15 0 seed beads, an 11 0 seed bead. That one looks like a barrel shape. That's not a good one. That one. That one's perfect. I'm going to do three seed beads. Right? And do, yeah, two and then three, okay? Just like this. So this part here, where well, I did three, if you're doing this for a necklace, you would probably want more to get your, your chain through there, because see, it's not that big of a loop. Okay, now I'm going to put my pendant on. So you want to pick it up from behind, like this, coming out the top. Okay, and then you're going to pick up the same seed beads again, but you're going to pick up three fifteens first. And then our silver sea bead. Mm. Picky. That one. And then two fifteens, just like that. Slide these down. So you have this. You're going to take your needle and you're going to pass through the gem duo only. And you're going to go through it on the same side. This was so confusing to me when I was trying to figure this out. I was trying to do it the other side. So you have to do the same side. That's the secret, okay? And then you pull this through. And you want that to sit up, up facing up, of course. And if it doesn't, you also twist it. And you can see right here, if it's twisted, you pull this out. And you can see as your threads crossed. Right, but mine it's not. Okay, now that we're coming out of the gem duo, I'm going to pick up two gold seed beads. 15s. Now I am doing this with 15s and 11. If you wanted, you could just do 11 in, in two different colors to help because that silver is our marker. And I think that you could probably also do this in 80 seed beads. Yeah. So you're not just, you know, limited to the 15s, because I know not everybody likes to use them. So now I'm going to go through the silver 11 and through the three 15s. Now, just like earlier, you want to pull this loop here, put your finger on this so it doesn't get loose, and pull this through. Okay, now we have this. Pass through the stone. 
come out the back. You're gonna I pull it tight here. I'll lay this down. Okay, it's tight. I'm gonna go through these three fifteens and through the eleven. Hold it between your fingers again so it doesn't loosen up. Okay, and then pick up two gold. Like this. Now I'm on this side. Okay, you can see I have my two gold there. I'm going to go through the gem duo again. If you can, go through the seed bead that is directly beside the gem duo, the 15 and the silver, because now what we have to do is we have to go around this whole side near edge and come up to here to add our connector thing. But, let me see. Where am I coming out at? Do I need to go through at an angle? Oh, right there I am. I don't want to go through if it's tight. I'll back out if it's tight. But right now... I'll slide this down. It looks like I'm just inside of the gem duo. Sometimes I have to go through at an angle. There I am. I'm coming out of the 15, but why can't I also get to the 11? There it is. Okay. Got through. So pull it down, and there we go. We have our little V shape there and up here. So you just want to wiggle this, flip it back and forth to make sure that it's movable and it's not too stiff. And then, like I said, we have to stitch all the way around on the outside edge and come up through here. So I might fast forward this because I'm just repositioning. So I'm going to go through these beads here, pull it tight through the next, um, try not to force it, you may have to do a few at a time, because it's round you won't be able to go through a lot, right here I'm actually going through four, and then through this bicone, through the tyla, through these, and we're going to do the bail again. So if you didn't catch it that time, you should catch it on the second. Mm, let's go through the Tyler too. Can I? Probably not, because it's facing down or pointing down. I'm just going to get to this gem, the gem bead. Yeah, yeah, like that. So see, I'm just going through the gem to it, because I don't want to... I don't want to chip or crack any beads. I, I did not have that problem with this one. But the last few projects I've done, I kept chipping and cracking beads. And oh my gosh. I was so annoying. I realized I'm in a hurry. I need to take my time and go through just a few beads at a time. And also, beading is kind of like fishing. We are using fishing line, but if you've ever fished, you know the feeling of the fish biting your bait what that feels like, the little nibble, or the, you know, the swallowing, you, you could feel it. Like where I live, I live in Florida, right, and all the time when I go fishing, there's these little puffers, checkered puffers, and I could tell that it's them that's biting my bait, because they literally peck at my bait like chickens. It, it feels like a pecking sensation. Sometimes I will catch them. But uh, a lot of the times, they just steal my bait and get away. Okay, through this here. Alright. Here is my gem bead. Seems like it's easier to go through the back. Okay. Again, I got it kind of all warped. Now, I want to make sure my drop is a little stiff, so all I have to do is just wiggle this, wiggle this, you know, just move it around, make sure it's not too tight, and there we go. Yeah, I just want to make sure there's wiggle room. Okay. Now we're going to do the bail for this. 
So again, same amount of seed beads. I think I should move my needle down further. I'm going to pick up two gold. These beads are so far away from me. They're probably like 18 inches away from my eyes, believe it or not. So there's two gold, so 15s, and then my 11, and then three 15s. Because of the cameras in my face, that's why I can't see them over there that well. So just like that, wait, is that four? No, it's three, okay. So two 15s, one 11, and three 15s. And then I'm going to take my connector and I'm going to go up, ow, I poked myself, I'm going to go up through the back. Come up the top and then pick up three 15s, my silver bead, two 15s, slide it down. Okay, this is what we have. And remember, the secret is you have to go through the same side that you're coming out of. You don't circle around like we usually do. Pull this through, and your connector should be facing up. Mine is. Pull it snug. Pick up two 15s again. Skip over these two that are already here and go through the 11 0 the, in the three 15s. Like that. Through the connector. Okay. Down through these three 15s and through the 11. You can then hold the connector and pull it. And then I'm in the right spot. So now I need my. 215. These are my last two beads. Go through the gem duo, but on this side now. Okay, because you already have the other side done. Pull it, and there we go. And this side, you don't have to worry about wiggle room really, because this is so small and it moves so freely. You don't have to worry if you have that too tight or not. All right. So there I am, and I am ready to tie knots. My other thread is up here. So I'm going to just check and see. That looks great. Yeah, we are ready to finish this off. So to tie knots, you just want to tie your knots in the bigger beads. So you're not going to be able to tie your knot in front of a 15-0, but you can an 11-0. You can hide a knot in front of an 11. So I have to come through this 15, because see, over here to this, 11, 15, or 15 is gold, 11 is silver. So I have to go through there, like that. And if you want right here, you could tie a knot. So I'm going to go underneath this thread, make a loop, pass through it twice. Slide it down, hold it in place there. Okay, and then go through this 11. And you could tie another knot right here. And the knot instantly hides in that 11, you can't see it. So then I could tie another knot here, right? Make a loop, pass through it twice. Slide it down through the tyla, and then I would tie another knot in front of the bicone, and I just reinforce this. Now you're not going to be able to. The furthest you're going to go with this is halfway to like right here. You can't go through that 15 again. It's impossible. You will break it. Do not try because there's already too many thread paths there. But right here, it's open and free. You can go through there. Now, your other thread, what you're going to want to do, finish this one off of first, right? Cut it off. You're going to want to put your needle on this thread. Okay, where am I exiting out of? Uh, I'm coming out of the bicone. 
So what I would do, I'm going to tell you what to do because I know this video is getting lengthy. You can fold this down. You need to go through this middle seed bead right here. Okay, so I'm going to show you. See that bead right there in the middle? Go through that. Okay, then once you get through there, take your needle and go through. Let me show you. I'm trying to... Okay, see? And then I come out just like that. Pull that out. And then you have to get through this silver and through the Delica. So go through there. Okay, you reposition your needle. Go through this gold and silver right here beside the Gem Duo. And if you want, you could tie a knot right here, and you probably should because it gets a little tricky. And um, you can go through these two, or maybe these. This one here is a little trickier to tie knots with. You're not going to be able to tie as many. If you can at least do three, that would be good. Yeah, you would go through there. So then after the tie, I'll go through those two there, silver, gold. Uh, tie a knot and to tie a knot here it's tight so you'll have to go down like this see and then come back up you know through like it would be on this side right there to tie your knot and uh, then pass through the wide duo but just be careful take your time go through one bead two beads at a time and tie at least three knots in right through here tying your knots okay and then trim it off and you're done with that and then all you have to do is take your little jump ring get out your chain nose pliers and attach your earring finding on and you'll be all done that's it it is so pretty I love the colors I think the name for the box starry night is the perfect name she did such a good job putting all of these colors together I instantly look at these beads and I think of little stars and it's beautiful. Starry Night. And it's also kind of funny because my name for my channel is Beautiful Nights. So I really enjoy this. So remember, I will put a link to the subscription box down there below in the description bar. And again, the month I'm using is November, December 2021. And again, if you can't get a hold of the box, I will do individual links for you down there below in the description bar. And that way you can choose different colors if you want to. And you can buy extra, in case you want to make more than one pair of earrings, you can buy extra drops. And check out all the drops she has available because you don't have to use this same exact size. She does sell bigger and smaller. This one here is like a flat teardrop, but you can also use the one that's round. Do you know what I'm saying? As long as it has a side drill hole, it'll work. And she also, also offers a lot of other connectors, some really gorgeous ones that I've got from her already. I got some square ones and some flowers and some really pretty charms and stuff. So yeah, I will link everything down below. And this is it. I hope that you guys this video. Leave me a comment. Subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and make sure you click the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload new videos and follow me on my social media sites. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.